Welcome to Allie's Attic, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, and today my surprise is a Christian pop artist songwriter who has a beautiful, beautiful voice. Can you please welcome Danielle Haskell? Hello, Danielle. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. I've been so looking forward to this. Um, now, I just want to tell you, when I listen to you, and I listen to your voice, you remind me of Taylor Swift. When Taylor Swift oh, wow. was, when she was kind of writing, yeah, when she was writing happy songs. Because <laughs> she's, yeah. she's got kind of dark a little <laughs> lately. But yeah, no, your voice has, you sound a lot like her. It reminded me of her as soon as I listened. Um so what I want you to do is, I mean, I know all about you because I have your bio, <laughs> but I'd like you to tell me your journey. Um, basically, when you started with music, all the stuff that you've gone through, and where you are right now. Yeah. All right. So I started singing and playing piano when I was about three years old, and it was just for fun. I did dance at the same time. I was just like kind of a show kit, you know, I just love things like that, and um, so I started basically doing these little shows, and my uh, grandfather actually built me a stage that I would do shows for them, uh-huh. it was pretty funny, I was saying I put your picture away, because that was the only song I had memorized, <laughs> and I would put this, like, I would have pants on my head, and I would have a whole funky outfit on, and I'd just dance all around and sing for them, <laughs> and then around six, I started playing guitar, so I started to get more into music deeper, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, guitar never really became my thing. I liked playing it, but I was much better at piano, so I kind of stuck with piano through the years, and I kept taking lessons. And at some point, I just decided to kind of stop. But in the middle of this, um, when I was in fifth grade, I went to Disney, and I got to sing at an event, and someone noticed me singing, but they didn't talk to me. They called me two years later, actually. Oh, wow. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, one day, my house phone was ringing, which was odd, because our house phone didn't go off very often. So, we pick up, and he's like, hi, uh, do you still sing? And I'm like, uh, I guess I do, because <laughs> I had never really done it seriously or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And um, so... He said, well, I would like to set you up with a vocal coach and see where this goes. Because at the time, I was too young, he thought, to work with, because I was only in fifth grade. And now that I was older, he wanted to try things out. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, sure, whatever, all right, that's fine, this, this will be fun. And then eventually, um, I get another call that says, we're going to try and send you out some more and get your music out there and get you going. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm sure, like, this will be all right, but we'll see what happens. I had very low expectations, you know? Yeah. And uh, I was just doing it for fun. Mm -hmm. And then I got told that I was going to have a music video guy, somebody to advertise for me, a co-writer, and a new vocal coach, and I I was shocked. No kidding. (laughs) Wow. And um, my co-writer's phenomenal. And he helped me write my songs. And that's kind of how I came to be. But uh, also, it's a lot to do with my grandmother and my mom. They they loved me playing music. And nobody in the family is very musical. Mm-hmm. So um, they were happy that I was. Yeah. <laughs> and they kept pushing me to do it. But like I said, this was all for fun. And then one day, I got to meet Jeff Pardo, who's my co-writer. And he changed the whole thing. I mean, and my vocal coach. Um, her name is Julia, and she's awesome, too. And they just changed everything for me. I All of a sudden, I was like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is real. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> wow, two years yeah. after. That is incredible. And then offering all this stuff. Wow. <laughs> that is very incredible. Yeah. Um, one of the things I love about you, Danielle, you, your songs um, obviously talk about Christ and um, God. Basically, you say God. I'm <laughs> sorry, I say Christ. You say yeah. God. Um, um, and a lot of the challenges that you faced as a teen and the loss of a loved one, or actually loved ones in your case, and it started to kind of change how you looked at the world. Um, kind of explain that. Yeah, it changed extremely because, I mean, 
at a, I, at a young age, I was very, very close with my grandparents. And I ended up, when my grandfather had Alzheimer's, I was there every day to help because he could only remember me for some reason. I'm not sure why, but mm-hmm. he never forgot my name throughout the whole entire thing. Wow. And that was a lot of uh, growing up to do on my end. I was 15, and my grandfather could only remember me, and I had a lot of pressure to help, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it definitely changed things and it was also very hard for me because I was very close with them and I was going through a difficult time in my life so I kind of had a lot of questions for God and stuff and I actually wasn't going to write forget wasn't an even I, an idea until um, I was headed back to Nashville to write it um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I had a completely different song idea and it wasn't I wasn't sold on it um, but I didn't really know what I was doing yet. And um, I get this call, and I was actually in Nashville to record, and well, to write my song. Um, and then I get this call that my grandfather had fallen and hit his head, and it wasn't looking good. And I immediately flew home and went back, actually, to write my song right after because I couldn't move it. Um, so when I went home, I was told, you know, don't expect much. He's not really going to remember anything. He's probably not going to remember you. I know he's remembered you, but you're probably just going to have to let that go um, because he's hit his head and he's very confused. Mm-hmm. And and I kind of, my, my stomach sunk. You know, it was really hard for me to hear. So I prepared myself for the worst. And when I walked in, he said, oh, Danielle, you're here. And I went, what? Holy. <laughs> Yeah. And it was one of those moments that just changes you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So as I was headed back to Nashville, I said, I have to write my song about this. And I got thinking about what that meant to me. And I got thinking about how during that time I had kind of felt like God had forgotten us. And I realized that sometimes we think that people forget us, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, like, just because we can't see that or if we feel that we've been forgotten, it doesn't mean that. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where the purpose of my song came from. And I thought, double meaning, more people can relate to it, and I can relate to it in both senses, you know. So that was really important to me. And my grandparents just had a really big impact on my life, so it really did change my music completely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had a song, New Day, and um, New Day was... Uh, I, I like New Day, obviously. It's one of my songs with a completely different tone mm-hmm. um, than the other two. And I think it changed my music to have more of a deeper meaning. Not that New Day doesn't have a deep meaning, but I think that my grandparents is really what inspired me to look beyond just writing a song. And you started to understand the important messages um that the Christian songs were delivering and they provided you with inspiration yeah. and comfort, which is wonderful. Um, I'm just going to talk about New Day for a quick second. Um, I love it. Um, as you told me that you listened to my story <laughs> on my website. Um, yeah. And I had to start over and it was a brand new life, never mind day. And the song really resonates with me because everybody goes through stuff. Everybody, you know, steps off the wrong, you know, the path that you should be on. And, um, but you can always get over it and start over. And so I love that song. I love all of your songs, but that song really resonates with me. Now, you. you can be quoted, I love this, as saying, the best part of music is when someone listens to and relates to your song. In the few minutes that they are listening to the song, not only do they become part of my story, but I become part of theirs, and that is an awesome feeling. That is one of the best quotes I've heard about writing music ever. <laughs> I think it's oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, because that, that is basically describes my whole entire passion for music. Is That's been the biggest part for me. That's what's kept me going. That's what's made me want to do this, because no matter what in life, I've always had a tendency to want to help people, and you can kind of hear that in all three of my songs, and then there's a fourth one actually coming out soon, <laughs> and um, you'll hear it in that too. And when I was thinking about and listening to all the stories that people were sending to me, I said, really, this is an impact on me as well as 
I'm having an impact on them. And I thought it was the coolest thing. Yeah, and it is. It is absolutely wonderful. Um, I love people that can write songs. I cannot. Um, but the great thing about songs is we all go through somewhat of similar stuff through our life. And because we do, when you write a song, it relates to a lot of things that other people have gone through. And I think that is a beautiful thing because there's always a song for something that you've, you've, you've gone through, happy, sad, whatever the case may be. Um, you capture it in an amazingly beautiful way. And I like that it is Christian. And like you said, you leave it kind of open for everybody to kind of take what they need from it. And I love that. Now, um, your grandfather passed, unfortunately. I'm very sorry for your loss. I was very close with my grandparents, especially my grandfather. So I know it's really, really hard. And um, then you and your grandmother, who are also close. So basically what happened was is I went to Canada. She had been not feeling well. Actually, while my grandfather was still alive, she had been complaining of hip pain. And she got a different chair. And it was just, you know, old people have hip pain. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really pay attention to that. Um, so for a long time, she was complaining of hip pain. And it turned out that it was cancer. Um, but she had said, when you go to Canada, um, would you light a candle for me? So I um, had actually taken a trip to Canada with a friend and my mom. And I went into the church that she told me to. And I lit a candle for her. And um, I noticed when I looked out the window, I saw this little store. And I can't explain it. It's one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. I just said, I need to go into that store to my friend. And she said, okay, well, I guess we'll go in the store. <laughs> so, um, and I walked into the store, and I bought her a ring, and I bought my mom a necklace. And they were the same color, and it was my grandmother's favorite color, so I said, oh, she'll like this ring, I'll get her that. So then I walked out of the store after buying it, and something just told me, you need to go back. And it was, again, weirdest sensation I've ever had. <laughs> so I walked back up to the counter, and I saw these little stones, and it had an angel on it, and it said, toujours le bec toi. And uh, I didn't even know what that meant. So I asked, and I said, what does this mean? And he said, it means always with you. And I said, oh, that's nice. Like, I'm going to get this for my grandmother. So I got her the little stone and the ring. And it turned out a couple weeks later, we found out that she had cancer and it had gone on for so long that there was really nothing that they could do about it. Mm -hmm. So the stone became very, very important. Mm -hmm. and as she struggled and as I struggled, we'd often remind each other, to you know? Yeah. And she actually had gotten me a present um, beforehand with a necklace that said Toujours avec toi on it, love Meme, because I called her Meme. Mm -hmm. um, and so it ended up having a lot more meaning than we even expected it to have. Yeah. And so when we had found out the news and I knew I had to write a song coming up, I said, I definitely know what I'm writing about this time. Yeah. So... So I had a lot of time to think on it, too, of exactly what I was going to do. And I was thinking, always with you is definitely something that reminds me of my grandmother. And it also can remind people of loved ones that they've lost. And it also can, again, be that double meaning where people can relate. And I've even had um, an atheist tell me, I listen to your music because I, I just like it. Like, I can relate to it, even though I'm not even a Christian or anything yeah. like that. So. It's really important to me that anyone can listen to my songs as long as they feel something. Well, and your voice alone. But yeah, your messages like encompass everybody. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, in a Christian or you're not a Christian. Um, I love the way you write because and because of that. Um, now unfortunately your grandmother lost her battle with cancer and passed away April twenty ninth of two thousand sixteen. So last year, which is still hard, I'm sure, to even talk about. Um, yes. Um, actually, that's my birthday, too. So oh, my it was goodness. a very difficult day. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's too bad. Um, well, I'm very, very sorry about you losing both of them. Um, I know how I felt when I lost 
my grandparents had <laughs> both sets. It was awful. Um, now, one of the things that you say about your grandmother that I absolutely love, because my grandfather was the same. If there was a puddle, <laughs> he would tell me to jump into it. <laughs> and you say, you say the same thing about your grandmother. And it's just beautiful to hear that you have these wonderful memories of them because those are all we have left when they pass. And it's, it's really nice that you talk about the good things too, instead of, you know, dwelling on all the bad things. And from those losses and other stuff that you've gone through, you've come up with these songs and like Danielle, they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I can't tell you enough. And like, <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't tell you enough. Um, now, like you said, look, so always with you, you knew you were going to write that song. It only took you an hour to write that song. Yes. Yes. And Forget was also very quick. Um, it, it was just instant. Especially when I walked in, I said to Jeff, my idea was Forget. And he just clapped and he said, got it. And we wrote that one in a half an hour. Wow. And then we wrote um, Always With You in an hour or a little less than an hour. And we recorded Scratch during that time period. So it's really like writing and recording a Scratch vocal. Wow. So it's a lot. So it's very quick writing. And Jeff definitely helps me a lot with that. But it's definitely the meaning behind it comes always from me and stuff. But he helps me piece it together. Well, that's wonderful. Like your your goal is to use your talents and life experiences to help others, and you do with your music. I mean, like I said, New Day is my anthem. Um, now you are originally from Maine, correct? Yeah. And now um, you graduated in 2016, and you decided yeah. that you wanted a change of scenery, <laughs> and yeah. you headed to Western North Carolina, and you get to look at the Blue Ridge Mountains constantly, which I'm very jealous about. <laughs> what made you decide to go from Maine to there? Well, I actually can kind of, New Day is kind of how my life works, I guess, and when I was in Maine, I was obviously very happy and stuff, but for one, there's not too much opportunity in Maine. It's very stay in Maine forever. And yeah. actually only a few of my classmates, I can think probably less than five, left the state. Oh, wow. Um, so everyone stays in Maine and you work in Maine and then you die in Maine. Oh, no, my goodness. <laughs> okay. And I kind of wanted a chance to start over like my song. And I wanted... I wanted. I saw myself doing more than just. And also, if I want to do music and help more people and do things like that, it's easier being in North Carolina. And I also just love North Carolina. And it's close to Nashville. I'm only six hours, maybe a little less, to Nashville. And I'm in Asheville, which has a lot of music. So it's a really awesome place to be. Nice, and it's beautiful as well. Um, oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Now, I just, I can't get over the fact that this store called to you when you were in Quebec, which is where you went when you came to Canada, and you found that stone and that, that saying. It's just unbelievable. And I've had experiences, I think everybody's had experiences like that where all of a sudden something comes over you and you don't know why, and you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, but you're, you're getting this message and basically that's what it is, is God sending you a message and sending you where you need to go. And I love, love, love that you found that stone and found that saying. It's absolutely beautiful. It brings tears to my eyes just talking about it because it's just, it's, it's beautiful. And it's beautiful that God directed you there. You know what I mean? Knowing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he, yeah, he was, knew before. A big help too. I think it would have been a lot harder. I know it's just the pearls and stuff, but um, I think it would have been a lot harder on both of us had we not found that stone. Yeah, I think so too. You had something to hold on to and something to share and something that would stay with you always. Um, basically, why the song always with you? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, you plan to continue to write and record songs, and you're also pursuing a future that combines music and business. Um, yeah. What exactly are you doing along with the music? So I think right now music has been kind of my way of expressing myself and it's been really helpful 
to learn the business side as well because I'm watching what everyone else is doing, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's important to learn the business side of things because as well as I want to help people, I also want to, I've always wanted to be in business, so it's been kind of like, actually before I wanted to be in music, I wanted to be a psychiatrist. Oh, wow. (laughs) To help people, Um, so, but I decided, you know what, no, music business is more probably my speed. And um, so I've just really been trying to learn as much as I can about it um, to get involved, you know. Yeah. Well, and that's that's a good thing to do. You need to do that. Now, yeah. if you had, like, how old are you now, Danielle? I'm 18. 18. It's weird that psychiatry called to you and music, Christian music called to you. Like, it's definitely your calling to help people, just just from yeah. those two <laughs> career choices. Um if you had any advice to give anybody, Danielle, about this industry or, you know, any good advice, what would that be? I think that the biggest reason for my success is I have looked at it as what's meant to be will be, and I haven't tried to become famous or anything like that. I've just tried to impact people, and I think that that's been my strongest aspect in my career for music, and I think that the most important thing with music, you know, you hear a lot of songs that don't really mean much. And I think that music is one of the best voices that you can use to help people. So mm-hmm. I just think the stronger the message, the more outpouring of people that understand your music you'll have. Mm-hmm. And definitely. And music is universal. <laughs> I mean, and yeah. my my thoughts on music right now, today, well, always, I mean, I listen to music just about 24-7. Um, is if they piped music all over the world <laughs> and started having like a 70s song is, is dancing in the moonlight and starting to do all that, I think the world would calm down. I really, really do. Oh, yeah, definitely. I just wish they'd start doing that <laughs> instead of piping all this yeah, news everywhere. Nice that everyone could calm down. Yeah. Um, I actually was looking at, there's a little sneak peek, I actually haven't told anyone this, but I've been looking at doing another song. I haven't done it yet. And we have not official plans for it yet, but I was looking to do another song with a friend of mine, kind of about what everything going on in the world. So yeah. hopefully I'll get to do that. Oh, that'll be really, beautiful. Really, like, there's not enough voices for everything going on right now, and I think everybody just needs to take a step back. Yeah, and come together musically. I honestly yeah. think so. Um, I just, I'm a 70s girl. Like, I love the music from the 70s. And there's always a story within those songs. It's not like some of the new songs where you don't even know what the heck they're talking about. <laughs> it's like, what yeah. we're singing about, I should say. Um, but I agree with you. I think a lot of people who are musical um, should come together and, you know, start it all across the world. Because I know that there's music all across the world. So we should start using that as an outlet instead of, like, all the violence on the news and everything that we hear on the social media and see. And um, if you can start that, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, giving you, I'm giving you a job now. <laughs> I wish all the musicians could just come together and we just make a huge thing, just to, like a huge movement, you know? Yeah. But hopefully someday everyone will come together. And I think music could be a huge part of that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's calming and it's healing, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, and your music does that, which is why I wanted to mention that, because I know that your your messages in your songs are helpful and calming and, um, you know, help you believe and know that, you know, other people are going through the same thing that you're going through. And that's the beauty of songwriting. Um, and that's why... Like, I absolutely love your songs. Like, I've been so looking forward to you coming on. It's not even funny, Danielle. Like, I am absolutely in love with you. you (laughs) And I'm serious. New Day, um, because of, I've just gone through a lot of stuff. And I had to kind of change my life around and start um, one day at a time. And each day is a new day. And it just is a beautiful, beautiful song. And um, Forget for Your Grandfather, wow. Like, just absolutely gorgeous. And especially the always with you for your grandmother and finding the stone in that store. That is just the most amazing story I've heard. Um, so what we're going to hear both those songs, Forget and Always With You. 
and I urge everybody to go. Her website's going to be up on my website. You can buy her music online. Um, go and find out more about Danielle. She's beautiful, as well as having a beautiful, beautiful voice. She's also a beautiful spirit. You can feel that just talking to her. And you can feel that through her music. So purchase her music. Go visit her website and um, share her journey because it's just an amazing journey so far. And you're 18. You have so many more and more journeys ahead of you. And I know that they're all going to be beautiful. Um so I want to just say thank you so much for coming on my show. I totally appreciate it. And I am so glad that I found out about you and I listened to your music, especially New Day. So thank you so much, Danielle. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. And even though you say you don't want to be famous, I don't either. <laughs> um, but you make an impact. I see your name on a lot of people's tweets um, because you make such an impact. And for being 18 and having that much of an impact is amazing. So don't ever stop. Well, thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. Your support means a lot to me. And everything that you've said has really, it, you've really touched me today. Like, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all emotional over here. Just like, thank you so much. Because everything that you said has means a lot to me. So oh, It's all the truth. It's all the truth. Um, And thank you so much for coming on my show, Danielle. I appreciate it so much. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you for joining me on Allie's Attic. Keep checking my website because you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. Cheers.